The Green Party of Canada will have a new leader. Thousands of members are voting today for one of eight candidates vying for the top job. The winner will succeed the woman who has been the face of the party for more than a decade. Eric Sorensen has a look back at the long career of Elizabeth May. And I organized an environment club in my high school. Long before she discovered politics, Elizabeth May found the cause that would shape her life, protecting the environment. In the 70s, she organized against pesticide spraying in her home of Cape Breton. In the 80s, the environmental lawyer worked on Canada's earliest climate policies on acid rain and ozone depletion in the government of Brian Mulroney. There was no doubt in my mind nor theirs that we had to act on the climate crisis. She became a national public figure, founded the Sierra Club and championed environmental awareness. To protest the infamous tar ponds in Cape Breton, she once undertook a hunger strike on Parliament Hill. It was a, a personal decision that as an act of desperation. Soon, she would take the fight for the environment inside the halls of Parliament. First, by winning the leadership of the small, often ignored, Green Party. The new leader of the Green Party of Canada is Elizabeth May. Elizabeth was never in politics for politics. She always wanted to make the world a better place, particularly by solving our serious environmental problems. And I think she realized when the Green Party leadership came open that that was a vehicle to help her do the right thing. Failing to win a seat in her first attempts, May finally found fertile soil for a green politician on Vancouver Island. And that was an historic turning point in Canadian politics. I stand here today as the first elected Green Member of Parliament in Canadian history. May brought her fight to Parliament and fought her way into the national debates. You just sweep it across the table, don't you? An important victory for women and for the issue she put at the centre of Canada's political discourse. Climate crisis is the single That's biggest economic opportunity in a generation in or more. That's not responsible. She has faced controversies, the views of some Green members, at a times her own comments. To be humiliated like the rest of us schmucks. But May spearheaded legislation on Lyme disease and a ban on whales in captivity and has worked across party lines to find common purpose. She believes she has more climate allies in Parliament today than when she first arrived, and her message of clean, green energy only resonates more as the planet warms. It's pretty basic that uh, we have a future that is not connected to threatening our children's lives. That so fundamental, and I think most Canadians understand that. Even though we're not quite ready for that change yet, she kind of speaks to the part of us that knows this is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to tackle climate change. May is stepping away from the leadership, but has prepared the next generation of climate fighters, like new MP Jenica Atwin. She's been so inspiring for any of us who have, you know, wanted to see someone take bolder steps for climate action. It paves the way also for other female politicians, which we know we need more voices of women in the House. Um, and so she's just, uh, she's, she's been a gift to us. Elizabeth May will still be in Parliament with a simple ethic. I'm a worker and a simple message that she's not done yet. <laughs> I just put my head down and keep on going. Eric Sorensen, Global News.